supporting cancer patients and uh, other people with medical problems for whom medical marijuana is often the only chance they have at improving their quality of life. How are you? A little bit misty, but yeah. we're uh, yeah. going to get this in. Winchester area. District 4. Okay. And uh, Representative Parker, you have been looking at the latest wording on this bill that the governor is uh, hopefully going to sign. Uh, Matt Simon of FriendHCompassion.org. Oh, what, uh, what sort of machinations do you expect are going on? Machinations. I'm focused on machinations that I can control, which is this rally. I'm not placing any bets this morning. Not the time for that. I don't know what's going to happen. The governor has been listening to uh, the attorney general, who has been insisting that uh, one plant can grow like 30 pounds. <laughs> she knows something nobody else knows. It's, it's just ridiculous. And medical marijuana can help you get healing. It helps people stay on it. And what the heck is the government's business? What is their business in, in, in the treatment? They're not doctors. It's just, uh, it's amazing to me. And I, I, I'm, I'm really concerned about how it's going to go today. I believe that um, the governor will do what he, what he always does, which is to look at the tough issues and um, decide in the best, what's in the best interest for the people of the state. It's the observation we began with. That's that seriously ill patients should not have to live in fear of their own government. Virtually every reasonable person agrees on that. The legislature listened to testimony from patients and their families, from a lot of different experts from different fields. They decided that patients should not have to live in fear of their own government. They found a way to do it. They passed a law. Some concerns were expressed by Governor Lynch. So that bill was taken back to the drawing board. It has been rewritten very carefully by a committee of conference that worked very hard, studied all the relevant issues, and determined that this was the way to do it. I think it's a, a good bill that will protect patients and give them safe access to legal, safe legal access to the medicine that their doctors say that they need. This is a critical day, and I do believe our governor in a manner that is only in the best interest of the people of this state. Over the course of this process, there have been a lot of people who have had to face a lot of fears, the fear of speaking out, the fear of telling their stories. Uh, the next speaker I'm going to introduce is one of those individuals who was reluctant at first to tell his story, but who has gained confidence and who has now become a very powerful spokesman for medical marijuana in New Hampshire. I'd like to introduce Dennis Acton. a shock for a 32 year old in good health to be diagnosed with cancer so um, it had quite an effect on myself and my, my wife's life. Uh, it's about a, a, an extremely ill patient being able to work with their doctor to get the, the, the medications that they need to, to cure the symptoms that they have. That's really all that this is about. Um, I hope that uh, the Republicans who are against us will, will realize that and realize that the time has come to allow this bill to pass. It makes me nervous to allow law enforcement to craft or to push legislation and have a say in things like this. It's really more of a medical issue. We are talking about health care, and I hope that they'll allow us, you know, the severely ill amongst us out here, to have the ability to work with their doctors and use drugs that are not as addictive and not as, as um, destructive as the opiate-based drugs that are just everywhere nowadays. As Dennis mentioned, there are many in law enforcement who are opposed to this bill, uh, notably Attorney General Kelly Ayotte and uh, the New Hampshire Chiefs of Police Association has spoken out against this as well. Uh, what we may lose sight of is that there are many in law enforcement, perhaps even a silent majority, who knows, who believe what we believe and would like to see these people be protected from arrest. And uh, to speak to that, I'd like to, uh, our next speaker is himself a retired police officer who still uh, from the Salem PD. He still um, is a police officer part-time over the summers in Hampton Beach. He teaches economics at Bentley College. He is John Tomasi. Nationwide, 88% of all marijuana arrests 
off for simple possession. These are not bad people that were taken off the streets. When I make an arrest for a simple marijuana possession, it ties me up for two to three hours. I can't be investigating rapes, robberies, or burglaries. I can't see how any administrator could say that this is an efficient allocation of resources. Tom Clancy, in one of his books, stated that the height of intellectual maturity is the ability to embrace an opposing view. I'd like to invite the New Hampshire Chiefs of Police and Attorney General's Office to look at this, to take a risk, and not to be afraid to speak out in the face of adversity. I believe this is a very good bill, and its time is overdue. The recurring themes of the last six months is that illness does not discriminate, that any person can come down at any time, apparently, with a severe illness that modern medicine might not be able to adequately treat. And one of the illustrations of that is uh, our next speaker, who is himself a former state senator, 14 years in the state senate, and has uh, also <coughs> stepped forward over the last several months, uh, found the courage to speak about his experiences with hepatitis C. So I'd like to introduce uh, the Honorable Burke Cohen. Every human being has a unique contribution to make. All of us, every one of us deserves a chance to heal and contribute what we all can to make the world a better place. Doctors are forbidden to under-prescribe, and I, I'm pleading with senators and representatives and with the governor, the law must not interfere with citizens healing from serious illness. Uh, We've met all eight of the governor's stated concerns as patients and citizens who care about each and every member of our family. We hope Governor Lynch allows this important life-saving legislation to become law. So there's still time to contact your senators and representatives and certainly the governor. Uh, I'd like to introduce Richard Vincent. Thanks for stopping the rain. Um, I do run the support group here in Concord for the MS Society. I'm here for myself, actually. Um, I've been diagnosed with MS for several years. So the, uh, the fact that uh, cannabis does work, it should be legalized. And uh, I would let Governor Lynch know that this House bill is not a Woodstock reunion. Forgive me, I, I forgot to make um, a very public um, thank you to, to Matt Simon, who has done so much publicly for this bill um, and so done so, so eloquently that um, I believe he has uh, you know, been a champion all along and he deserves all of our thanks. Well, thank you all so much for coming, for supporting this bill, for supporting the patients, for being patient with this process, which has been one of the most difficult parts of all. Today's the last day for the legislature, which has done a wonderful job all along studying this issue and concluding that this bill should pass. We hope to see it pass in the House and Senate today. We hope to see it pass Excuse by me, healthy Senator, margins. Again, Cohen, and we oh, yeah, hope Sammy to see Parker. it your, become your law in the state of New Hampshire. So please do what you can to help support this bill. Contact Governor Lynch's office, certainly. Thanks so much. Thank you. What do you think the chances are, Representative? Well, medical marijuana will pass. It's just a question of whether you get the like two-thirds threshold that you would need to override the veto. What do you think the chances of the two-thirds is? In the House? Yeah. Fairly good. In the Senate, probably not. I don't think you can get the... You, need a, you would need DeVries, Gallus, and one more Republican. I don't see getting any Republican, other Republican. So you figure you, we really have to get it past the government? Yes. I think the governor needs to sign it. If I were a Democrat in support of medical marijuana, who was called up to the corner office to be coerced into voting for the gov for the budget, I would have said, yeah, I can vote for your budget, Governor, if you don't veto medical marijuana. Unfortunately, most Democrats haven't learned how to play hardball yet. Uh, <laughs> Even though they watch Chris Matthews all the time. <laughs> Good luck.